What are the top pitfalls that sellers face when selling their property? Let's talk about it. What's going on, good guys? Chris Noon here, Chris Noon Real Estate, Chris Noon Real Estate.com. Like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend. Hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, smash that subscribe button. I went too far. So, we're talking about the most common pitfalls that sellers face when putting their property on the market and or just trying to sell their property. What are the top pitfalls that sellers face? Face. Number one, overpricing their property. That is, num in my opinion, that is number one, overpricing their property. When you overprice your property, there are a lot of issues that's gonna come with that. Number one being, people aren't gonna take your property serious. You will stay on the market for a very long time, especially if you overprice it astronomically, okay? So you're doing astronomical pricing, your property is worth 700,000, yet you wanna put it at 1.3 to give them negotiating room there's no negotiating room there nobody there's going to be nobody to negotiate with why because nobody's going to take you serious that's just the reality of the situation you need to put your property somewhere where it's attractive people are then going to come in and now you can start the negotiations and more than likely when it's priced properly your price is going to go up because now you're going to get into a bidding war you're going to get people in there and you're going to have so much interest that you're going to be like whoa this property we priced it at seven hundred thousand, which is is correct for the area but i'm i'm at 750 right now i'm, I'm at 800,000. now you win an appraisal issue now you have an appraisal issue for the banks which is a great problem to have which this guy normally gets into with the banks because i make sure i put the properties at the right price so that's number one number two not cleaning out your property you're keeping it cluttered. That is a big, big, big problem. That's a pitfall you're gonna fall into because you may love your furniture. You may love your painting. Other people may not. That's the reality of the situation. You may be proud of your daughter's grades on the refrigerator. Other people may not. You may be loving that red couch in that yellow living room. Other people are going to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just walked into the condiment section at Key Food, <laughs> right? <laughs> mustard and ketchup is is not is not okay declutter your property repaint it the way that it needs to be just make it a white box it doesn't have to be nothing extravagant repaint it make it neutral and take out the big furniture take out the not only should you take out the big furniture you should also take out all of the papers that you have you have a bunch of files there in these crates take them out you have a bunch of clothes everywhere take them out if you got a bunch of clothing racks everywhere if you can't line them up neatly to where it looks good take them out put them into storage until it sells people want to walk into something where it looks amazing or they want to walk into something that has a good flow if i have to walk as a buyer if i have have to walk around your clothes and walk around this big behemoth of a couch or you still got the TV with the booty butt in the back is going to be so distracting. It's going to throw off the flow and the rhythm of the property. So now you're actually working against yourself. So that's a big, big, big pitfall a lot of sellers fall into when selling their property. Number three, having a discount agent. Now, I'm not opposed to agents. I'm not anti-agent, even though I don't like a lot of agents. What I am anti is you going with the agent that's the cheapest rather than the agent that's the best. Okay? So you you're in a selection full of agents. You figure all agents do the same thing, but this agent charges me 1% while this agent is saying 6%. You're gonna go with that, the agent with the 1% because you're thinking in your mind, I'm saving 5% on my house. This is a million dollar house, that's 50,000 in my pocket. And all this agent did was use his phone, his or her phone, to take pictures, you still see him in the reflection. The pictures are upside down or, or sideways. And I've seen this, I'm, I'm just making this up. You you got the flash in the mirror. All, all of these things, they're asking you to show the property rather than show the property themselves. They'll probably just slap a lockbox there. It's a whole bunch of things that's happening to where you're just like, whoa, I can't believe this happened. Also, if an agent is unsuccessful in negotiating their own price, right, their own commission, how do you figure they're going to fare when they're negotiating 
negotiating a price for your property. They, I'll just do it for 1%. You get what you pay for. So you're not going to get, he's not going to fight for your property. You're just going to be another one of his many properties that he has on the market. He or she has on the market at whatever price that you wanted to pick. He didn't go, he or she didn't go through anything that they should have as far as pricing is concerned or, or, or strategies. Just took phone pictures and put it on the MLS or the RLS and maybe it'll sell. If it sells, it sells. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Now you have a bad taste in your mouth of agents because your last agent didn't sell anything. So your next agent, you want them to do a better job. However, the last agent charged you 1%. So you want this better agent to now only charge you 1%. It may not happen. That may, agent is more likely going to say, okay, I'm going to walk out your door and never see you again. I'm not saying it should happen. I'm not saying it shouldn't happen. Don't get mad at me. I'm just telling you this is probably the mind of a lot of agents. You don't have to go with the most expensive agent. You have to go with the agent that's going to give you the best results. You're going to have to go with the agent that's going to show you a marketing plan, a strategy plan. Yes, experience matters. However, you may get a great agent that's only been in the business two to three months. So you need a whole bunch of other factors. You need to make sure that agent vibes with you. You need to make sure that you vibe with that agent, that you guys are able to have a conversation. These are all things that matter, not just going for the discount agent, okay? So now I'm going to give you guys a bonus. I was only going to do three, but I'm going to give you guys a bonus. Pit for number four that sellers fall into while selling their house is not hiring Chris Newton real estate. Oh, you thought I wasn't going to say that? Yes. That is a very big pitfall that a lot of sellers face when they don't hire me. Moi, Chris, Joe, that's the that's a very big pitfall. Why? I'm going to tell you why. One, because I'm the man. Who? The reason why. What? Huh? That's That should be enough. However, I'm going to tell you something else. My certifications are crazy. Certified in mortgage loan origination so I can vet your buyers better than the average real estate agent. Why? Because I know the questions to ask. Because I'm certified in mortgage loan origination. So when the buyers go and talk to a loan officer, I'm going to talk to them as if I'm a loan officer. Now, I'm not a loan officer. I'm not licensed. I'm certified. Yes. Certified check. Bing. Interior design. Certified in interior design. When people are walking through your property, who do you think is going to be able to sell it to them the best? Me. Moi. Joe. I'm going to be able to sell it to them the best. Why? Because now I know the kind of language that they want to talk to. NLP practitioner. Neuro-linguistic programming. I know the senses. Some people are kinesthetic. Some people are audible. Some people are visual. When they're saying certain words that the average person might not understand, okay, this person needs to be spoken to like this. So now I change my vocabulary vocabulary up to fit that person. Boom! Those are just three reasons as to why the number four pitfall is not choosing me. I got many more certifications. I don't want to toot my own horn. You guys aren't right here for that. I'm just giving you guys the reasons and the pitfalls, the most common mistakes that people make when selling their property. And the bonus one, the bonus one, the bonus one, the bonus one, the bonus one is not choosing me. So now, you don't make that mistake. You make sure you give me a call. Whoa! Like, comment, subscribe. Talk to you guys soon. Later.